Well, thank you all for coming. My name is Earl Weiner. I am a member of the National Transportation Safety Board. Before I go any further, on behalf of the NTSB, I'd like to extend our condolences to those impacted by this tragic accident. Yesterday, the team arrived in Os Roswell, New Mexico, began our on-scene investigation into this accident involving the collision between two freight trains. The NTSB is an independent federal agency charged by Congress to investigate all civil aviation accidents, as well as significant accidents in other modes, such as rail, trans uh, marine, pipeline hazardous materials. We also issued safety recommendations aimed at preventing accidents to happen again. Here's the factual information we have right now. Yesterday at approximately 6.20 a.m. local time near Roswell, New Mexico, a moving Southwest Railroad freight train on the main track entered the siding track and collided with a standing Southwestern Railroad freight train. One of the two crew members aboard the moving train was fatally injured. As a result of the collision, several locomotives and cars derailed. The investigator in charge of this investigation is Mr. Ted Turpin. Mr. Turpin is a senior investigator with over 42 years of railroad experience. He's leading a multidisciplinary team of experts. Yesterday, we established our investigative groups. These are track, mechanical, operations, human performance, and event recorders. Shortly after arriving on scene yesterday, we surveyed the accident site, began the inspection of the equipment, and coordinated removal of the wreckage. Both trains were equipped with event recorders. These recorders tell us the speed of the train at the time of the accident, throttle positions, braking information, as well as other information, approximately 65 parameters in all. We recovered one forward-facing video camera from a locomotive in the middle of the contest, but there were no video recorders on the lead locomotive. We were able to download event recorder data from the striking train, and a preliminary review of the data indicate routine operations such as a brake test of the locomotive performed prior to departure. The horn, throttle, and brakes were actively used during the trip. The horn was operated at the crossing prior to the impact. Total trip duration of approximately 52 minutes, covering approximately 15 miles. The throttle was dropped to idle approximately 32 seconds prior to impact. The train reached a peak speed of 42 miles per hour at that time. The allowable track speed in the area was 49 miles per hour. The engineer put the train into emergency braking approximately 18 seconds and 827 feet from the impact point. The speed at impact was about 31 miles per hour. Yesterday, we also learned that the siding switch was aligned for the siding and locked into that position. Today was our first full day on scene. We've held an organizational meeting this morning and established parties to the investigation. They are the Federal Railroad Administration, Southwestern Railroad, and the New Mexico Public Regulation Commission, the state FRA inspector. Today, we also interviewed the conductor of the standing train, and we'll be interviewing the engineer later today. Our mission is to understand not just what happened, but why it happened, and how to prevent that accident from happening again. We won't be determining a probable cause of the accident while on scene, nor will we speculate about what might have caused the accident. We expect to be on scene four to five days, one final comment, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the first responders of the, to this accident. They've worked very hard, and we certainly appreciate all they've done for us in this accident investigation. We're in the very early stages of the investigation. 
Once we leave the scene, our investigation will continue at headquarters. It'll take us approximately a year to determine the probable cause. For future updates, you should contact the NTASB's Office of Public Affairs. That telephone number is area code 202-314-6100. I also encourage you to follow us on Twitter or on our website. Our Twitter handle is at NTSB, and our website is ntsb.gov. With that, I'd be happy to take a few questions. Uh, hi, Jared Tucker from the Russell Daily Record. We've had um, at least uh, two readers uh, comment over social media saying that they witnessed workers working on that same line the Sunday prior to that crash. Can the NTSB confirm that at this time? We have no knowledge of track work that was done at this, you know, prior to it. Okay. Can you kind of elaborate on how these track switchers operate? Are those manually operated satellite? How do those, how do those operate to make that switch from track to track like that? It's a manual operation. So it's a, a, basically a switch lever that is locked with a padlock. The conductor has the key to that padlock. It's moved to the other position and, and then locked again in that position. So we found the switch locked in the siding position. And is it the conductor who parks the train on that side track that has that key or that locks, locks it in that place? Or? That would be the person who, have the, who would have the key, yes. Um, people have said that the two men on the train jumped out. Um, that I don't know if you can confirm that or if you have any evidence to support that, that they had actually jumped out before impact. There's indi certainly indication that they jumped out um, prior to impact. The irony is, of course, that the survival space in the lead locomotive was very much intact. So had they stayed aboard the locomotive, uh, they would very likely have survived the accident. Wait, the people who, what? Who, who, the people who jumped off could have survived, what do you think? If they'd stayed on the train. The, the people, the engineer and the conductor aboard the moving train would have survived, most likely would have survived the accident had they stayed aboard the train as opposed to jumping off. We'll take one more question. So the gentleman that died and the person that were injured, jumped, both jumped off? Both jumped off. It, this is not unusual. We see this happen more often in, in pending collisions. But in this particular case, the survival space on the lead locomotive uh, was virtually intact. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.